Hello, Rick. Hello, Wendy. How are you? I am having a wonderful day today. Thank you so much for asking. Just so excited to know that we were getting together to play today. We were creating our next edition of Gifts and Gratitude and getting us up on YouTube. Hi, YouTube, everybody's. Hey, everybody. Excited to be here today to um, share our next project that's kind of Valentine's Day based, something for someone you love, whether that's yourself or someone else in your life. And uh, we'll be going into the gift and then also gratitude. Hey, Rick, what are, what are you grateful for today? Well, this is an easy one today. <laughs> chocolate, chocolate, and a little more chocolate <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. a good day to be grateful for chocolate. It's a great day. Um, and we're going to be make, making some, this bark is better than your bite. And you'll see what we're talking about here in a minute. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yummy. I can't wait to make the bark that's better than the bite. Right. That's right. Um, and another cool thing about this is like, a lot of people that have seen our videos, you can customize this a hundred ways to Sunday. Um, and we're going to be doing it. Uh, Wendy's doing it a little bit differently than I'm going to be doing it, but there's countless ways that you could jazz this up um, the way you like it for if you're gifting it or for yourself. Perfect. And as usual, we're, we're suggesting you probably have these ingredients in your home all the way from the chocolate to the packaging we're going to share with you. So absolutely. Yep. Let's have some fun. Let's do it. So we're going to start, like I said, this is called, this bark is better than your bite. We made that up. It's, it's your general uh, basic chocolate bark. So if you haven't made it before, you'll see just how easy it is and how you can make it your own. You what know, I don't know if you know this about uh, me and Rick, but we make a lot of stuff up because look, it's all made up, right? So let's make up the good stuff. Here we go. Okay. So this is, this is basically well, two ingredients, but depending on how much you want to put on your bark, it, it could go up to, you know, however many things you want to put on it. But really, it's dark chocolate. And what I'm using um, is a semi-sweet dark chocolate. Looks like Wendy is as well. And then if you'd like to, some white chocolate, which you can drizzle on top. But I think Wendy has something else in store for us, correct? I do, I do. I'm gonna just give you a tease of what I have in store. Yum. Magic with some peanut butter and we're gonna see how that works because I love chocolate and peanut butter. Oh my God. So do I. Actually, you know what? I just thought of, look what I still have left over. The little Reese's Ooh. from Christmas. Yes, you can always, I, I can eat those. Oh my gosh, I could eat those every day. So you have your two kinds of chocolate or chocolate and peanut butter in Wendy's case. Um, and then any toppings you're gonna put on and it looks like you're doing some pretzels for the salty. Um, I can't tell what's in the middle. Let everyone know what that is. Cherries. Oh, yum, okay. Um, and then- Montmorency cherries. Excellent, and some mixed nuts, right? Yep, some almonds. Oh, okay. Oh. I also have these little um, candy shop rainbow chips. I may or may not use. I'm not sure, but uh, I have those as well. Okay. And I'm, I'm doing pretty similar. It sounds like we're more on the savory side than the sweet side um, for our toppings. But of course, you could put any kinds of candy on here, um, hard candies or gummy candies. I'm doing the, the pretzels as well. And actually I chose to do a mix of nuts. So I have like three or four different kinds of nuts in here that I'm gonna sprinkle on there. Okay. I have gluten-free pretzels. I'm so excited. Wow. You are, I, you are um, really good, doing really well with that gluten-free thing. I, I'm very impressed, I have to okay. say. Okay. What so do we do now? We're gonna start, I'm gonna pull over so people can see what I'm doing here. So I chose, um, like I said, the semi-sweet chocolates. They're just in these little squares. You need about eight ounces of this. I'm using a double boiler, which is actually, it's a modified double boiler. It's just some water in a pot that's boiling and then a um, metal bowl where your chocolate, chocolate can melt. So I'm gonna put those in there. 
Now, I went a little different in this. I love the double boiler and it definitely is very good to use, but I kind of, I got back into my relationship with Chef Mike. Y'all know Chef Mike? Here, I'll let you meet him. There he is. Say hey to Chef Mike. Where? Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody. I was, I was like, are you talking to your imaginary friend again? What's happening right now? Microwave. So I put my eight ounces of chocolate into a glass mixing bowl and I heated it on um, medium high for a minute, took it out, stirred it, and then another minute, stirred it. And about another minute after that, you want to check it, but I got a nice chocolate melt of the dark chocolate. So you can go either way on the stove or use glass in your microwave and um, uh, go slow and you will get a nice melted chocolate. Yeah, and um, I tried to break mine up um, when I did the, the test run of this, I broke it up um, in some smaller pieces. Um, it helps with the melting. Usually it takes, um, you know, just like two minutes for it to get to the consistency that you want. And it's really beautiful if you've ever gone by those stores, like say you're at the beach or, you know, somewhere where they have all those delicious like snack stores and you can see in the window um, where they're making the chocolate on the big um, like pralines or whatever. It's so shiny. It's awesome when it looks amazing. You know, that was my first job working at Palm Beach Confectionery in the Broward Mall. Um, in the window, they had a window where people could watch you. Imagine that me being, you know, entertaining people at 16. Um, <laughs> Did so, you? Yeah, I get it on the chocolate. And, you know, so many people look at bark and don't realize how easy it is to make. Oh, my and God. Yeah. Love it. So, all right. So you're melting down. Now, once it's melted, I'm going to tip that down. Yes. And um, what, what do we do once it's melted, Rick? So I did want to say one thing about the chocolate. Make sure you choose a good quality chocolate. This ingredient is only a couple recipe or only a couple ingredients, obviously chocolate being the most important. So pick a good, pick a good brand. Um, you wanna make sure that you're, you're maximizing the flavor. Okay, so once you're melted, you're gonna take a sheet pan and put some parchment paper on it. I'm moving you back. Here's another conversation we were having about the, um, I already ripped my parchment paper, but if you have a sill pack, um, I want to remember to use my sill pack more because it's a little bit more environmentally sound. It's not as easy. You don't just throw it away, but these are great if you don't have parchment paper. Great yeah. to make cookies on, great for the chocolate. Next time, next project, I'll make sure I use one of those. All right. All right. So you have your, you have your, um, your, pan there and your, I'm sorry, I'm like making sure I'm not burning myself as I get this hot, hot uh, chocolate off here. So you just take the hot chocolate, the melted chocolate and pour it onto your parchment paper. And you, what you wanna do is spread it out so it's about a quarter inch thick. So you just let that go. Look how beautiful that is, wow. I love these silicone uh, spoons. We've already raved about these, right, Rick? I have the same. I'm using my my confetti, my funfetti silicone spoon. Confetti spoon. All right, so you said about a quarter of an inch? About a quarter of an inch. And it can be, you're breaking this up, remembering the pieces. So, you know, there's no, no right or wrong of what shape it is. I'm just swirling it around with the spoon to just kind of even it out. Yep. And um, mine looks like you can almost see your reflection in it. It's so shiny. Look. Can you see my reflection? Oh, look how beautiful I am in the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's beautiful in chocolate. What are you talking about? All right. So that's awesome. So, and then you're doing the peanut butter, right? Yes. Oh, wait. There's a very important step here. We need to see your face, Wendy. And you need to hold up your spoon and you need to take a lick of the spoon. This is very important. Make sure it's not too hot. Whoa, 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 whoa. You don't want to lick if you're going to go your spoon back in. So you can put this your spoon this, <laughs> this was being gifted to me. So <laughs> well, be careful about that. You don't want to, well, they'll never know. Mm. That's good. 
Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that, Rick. Delish. Very important as you're doing this. Um, and then you're doing the, um, oh, actually, very important step. Take whatever your ingredients are, your little toppings, and what you're going to do is just sprinkle them so they're even, evenly uh, dispersed around your chocolate. And you can do, as, like I said, as much or as little as you want on this. If this was for kids, you know, you could do like gummy worms. Oh my and gosh. Fun. It'd be awesome. Or for adults that like that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And your nuts on there. I feel like the, um, the salt on these pretzels is going to make this just pop, you know? Mm hmm it's so pretty too. I love it. I loaded mine up. <laughs> I'm putting some of these little colored things on just because they're fun. Add a little zazu to it. And I've kind of changed my mind about the cherries because I'm wondering how cherries and peanut butter would be. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that. I love... Um, chocolate and cherries but with the peanut butter you might want to skip the cherries yeah i think i'm just going to go with i'll put a few nuts on here i have almonds yep i have sliced almonds i have um i just told people mixed nuts i mixed nuts i picked um cashews sliced almonds and peanuts Ooh. on mine all right well, what else would I put on him? I mean, there's so many things you could, I was wondering too, you know, for the salty is some people may even put a um, potato chip on there. I've seen potato chip and chocolate before. Absolutely. Yeah. Or um, coconut shreds on here. Oh, delicious. nice. Very nice. Yeah. Delicious. It's so, like a endless, endless what you can do with this. All right. I'm going to have to, um, so I, I, just took about a couple tablespoons of peanut butter and I put it in the saute pan. And literally. And while, while Wendy's doing that, since I'm doing the white chocolate, I'm showing everyone the pieces of white chocolate. You need about four ounces of white chocolate here and just do the same thing you did before in the double boiler and melt that. This is what you're going to drizzle. Yep. Or when, leave it in your glass cup, either way. And Wendy, you were going to talk about um, the love language. Is that what you said? What well, is that? I asked you if you knew. Let me finish with the peanut butter here. So um, I will talk about those love languages. Um, so I just, like I said, I just took the peanut butter, two tablespoons, and just turned it on low. But I didn't turn it off. I'm going to do that now. And, um, and it just melted down beautifully. So do I just drizzle it, Rick? You just drizzle. I'm sorry. I jumped way ahead. I thought you already had it. Uh, yes, you just drizzle it across the top and I'm melting my white chocolate. But this is what I'll be doing with my white chocolate. So I'm drizzling. Am I doing it right? I'm doing it right. Ooh, like there's a right, like there's a right way to drizzle peanut is butter. Is there a white right way to drizzle? That's a good question. No. It's the way, it's how much you want on there. That's the right way. Yeah, I think there's two tables. Oh, I got a little bit of a pile there. Whoopsie. Got to keep moving with the drizzle. Hey, when you when you eat a recent peanut butter cup, do you eat everything together? Or are you one of those people that eats the chocolate and tries to save the peanut butter? I have no idea what you're talking about there. <laughs> Who eats the chocolate? Is that like a way you dissect an Oreo? Same type thing? I go, I go all around the edge and eat the chocolate edge and then I eat the peanut butter middle. Don't ask. I, I don't know why. I'm That's not going to ask. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Is that what we got now? I feel like I want to um, do something here. What are you doing? I'm going to take a little squizzle stick here and just kind of pull the uh, peanut butter around because I have some places here that it's a big blob of peanut butter and I don't love that so much. Yeah, and and you can um, you can totally do that. Like if you want to be more um, specific with the design, like zigzag design or anything like that, you could use a. 
toothpick or chopstick, whatever you got laying around. Hmm. Hmm. So my white chocolate is almost there. And you know what I noticed? Same thing. Um, I, I don't know if it's like the fat content or what, but white chocolate is not as um, liquidy, like runny, as chocolate chocolate. So. Well, all I could say is I hope the, I, mean, I hear what you're saying about the white chocolate. The okay. consistency is different, just like the peanut butter. So I'm really hoping the peanut butter dries up a little, you know, hard. Yeah. I don't know if peanut butter really hardens. So I guess we'll see, but I'm kind of swirling it in, swirled it in to increase the chances of hardening. And I'm, I'm spreading mine as you're doing that or drizzling mine, I should say. And then I'm going to spread it. You said you're using a chopstick, right? I used a swizzle stick. A swizzle stick. And then I'm putting these colorful stuff back on again. Do another layer. Yep. That's what's so you know funny. What I was looking for when I found these colorful ones, I really wanted to find the red hots. Oh. Perfect for Valentine's Day. So it's red. And I love something spicy with my chocolate. So, but I couldn't find them. So that's where I use these um, little candy beads. All right, so now I have my brick. Am I going into the fridge with this? You are. So I just wanted to finish my drizzle so we can okay. both, so we can show everyone what these look like. So Wendy, yours, yours looks amazing. It looks like a chocolate pizza. Delicious. Yum. Yours looks amazing too. Also with a white chocolate, delish. All right. So what you're gonna do now is um, just pop this in the refrigerator for probably an hour. So I'm gonna do that real quick. As it is. And then through the magic of my refrigerator, <laughs> Look what you get. Wow. Look at these beautiful pieces. It looks beautiful, Rick. Oh, I can't yeah. wait to taste them. That's going to be good dessert tonight. I know. I wish, I wish you were here. I would give you one. I know. I know. Well, I may be gifting it to uh, someone else, but if, if I were to be using something for Valentine's Day, both, I thought we'd share a little packaging. Yeah. 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 Now, I am excited about reusing a lot of boxes that I've been saving. And I've been saving my HP. I do the subscription thing for my ink. So I get these adorable little boxes. And so what I'm going to do is when someone opens the box, so it's like, looks like this. Now I will wrap it. Um, I will cover this most likely, maybe with stickers. I mean, we really invite you to try things that are different than you've done before to make that impact of um, that uh, satisfaction of creating something and also reusing things that are laying around the house. Absolutely, yeah. And so then when the person opens the gift, which will probably be Matt, and maybe I'll just practice with him tonight about Valentine's Day, they open it up and I made a little heart. There's the red paper that the chocolate will be in. And I made a little heart literally out of a fancy pipe cleaner. It was in my craft drawer. That, and I, that is, that was like, I mean, it's like made for that little heart. That's awesome. I know, I know. And then I just taped it on a white piece of paper and then the thing, and there you go. Happy Great. Valentine's Day, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I'm, I'm reusing as well. I found actually some Christmas um, tissue paper, red and green, obviously, for, thanks, or for um, Valentine's Day, red. And I'm just wrapping my pieces up because they can stick together. And this is a little bag that I found at a local um, candy supply store with the little um, window. And of course I could decorate this. I just didn't get around to doing it yet, but you could de decorate this for any holiday, including um, Valentine's day, put a couple pieces in here. And, you know, I think if you're gifting this to someone, um, you know, depending on the size of your bag or your pieces of art, like three pieces is perfect. 
perfect gift for somebody. Perfect. Um, that leaves me one to eat right now, actually. So. I see why he picked it. <laughs> I, I was like, where did he come up with that? Oh, because he has four pieces and he's going to put three in there and eat it. Uh -huh. It's not true. It's not I true. No, you are. <laughs> Your little gift, delicious. Beautiful. And you'll make someone really grateful when you um, share your gratitude and love for them. And, you know, part of the reason why I love doing this, and I think Rick does as well, is, is because of my love language and how good that makes you feel. So there's a man, Gary Chapman, wrote a book called The Five Love Languages. And each of us have a language that when it is spoken to us, we feel the most loved. And the five languages are acts of service, kind words, physical touch, which is hugging, kissing, cuddling, um, uh, quality time, and physical gifts. Now, mm -hmm. my love language is physical gifts. So when my husband or anybody gifts me something, I feel loved. I feel loved. And so when you know your partner's love language, you can do things for them personalize the gift, so to say, so they feel the most loved. Hmm. I remember I, when I first learned this, Rick. Um, go ahead. I, I was I was going to say, I, I, I don't know if you had told me this before, if I've heard this before, but it's not top of mind right now. But as you went through that, I was like, for me, it's definitely quality time like quality time spent together. That was one of them that you said, right? Yes. That resonated with me. Yeah. Yes. yes. And so there's a quiz in the book. I mean, once again, we're not getting anything. Go check out the book. I know that it made a big dip impact in my relationship because, um, well, maybe another time. Call me. Well, I'll tell you about that story about love languages and Matt in the grocery store some other time. I was going to say, put a link below. Let's yeah, talk. Right, right. <laughs> All right. So this was so much fun. I hope it was fun for all of you. It was, it, I, I enjoyed it. Can't wait to eat this, obviously. Um, and, and as always, I'm grateful for spending time with you, Wendy. Um, no matter what we do, it's always fun. Um, and hopefully everyone will subscribe if they haven't already and come back to see the next thing that we're going to be making. I'm sure who knows what it's going to be right now, but it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and share us with your friends because um, we'd love to spread the joy and the gratitude and the gifting ideas. That's right. Happy Happy Valentine's Day too, everybody. Uh, yeah, when we get to that, right? I mean, it's right around the corner. Um, but uh, happy love day. Yay. <laughs> That's right. Bye, Wendy. Bye, Rick.